What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new video regarding some upcoming 2020 WWE action figures as well as 2021. Some of these may be on into 2021. Now, we did get a lot of these at San Diego Comic Con. We got new images of these figures coming out and Elite 78 will not be included in this video. But today, guys, we're going to dive into some problems that uh, we have with some upcoming WWE figures, man. I mean, I have a whole list here. I've done this video in the past, I think, with some things. I know we covered it with the top Talents Rollins and we talked about, you know, figures missing things and being inaccurate and stuff of that nature. So I figured it'd be a good time with Comic-Con just passing, guys. Let's redo this video and include all the things at San Diego Comic-Con that are inaccurate or, you know, that I have a problem with that I want to fix up or that uh, definitely need to be changed and, and, you know, all those things in between, guys. So let's go ahead and dive in, guys. Let's start off with Elite 80 Eric from the Viking Raiders. Now, I will say when they come to MDT, they will not be called the Viking Raiders. They just will not be that. But Eric right here, guys, you already know the lower legs here just look so weird with that with that skinny leg, short kick pad problem. This will not be the only short kick pads we get in the video, but Eric is just looking super odd. The legs look so weird, and it's so crazy because Ivar looks so good, bro. Like, his figure is like head to toe perfect, and then with the short kick pad mold, this figure gets lost in the shuffle. We're definitely going to fix this figure up in surgery, but I had to include this figure because nobody likes these short kick pads, and they're not accurate. Nobody wears boots like this, and I just do not understand. I I don't get why we get this. I'm sure there's a logical explanation behind it, but it's just uh, frustrating that we have to switch those things out. But I would love to, you know, just sit down and understand these parts and stuff that we get sometimes just to, to know where their head's at when they're making the figures. I don't know who is the head, you know, guy that says, you know, this is what we have to do due to certain standpoints. But that is something I had to include, guys. Let's move on to the next one, which is this Jeff Hardy basic figure. And I want to give a huge shout out to D Freedom 30 on Instagram because he is the one that showed the attire that this is supposed to be. And you guys will see here, it's not supposed to be the royal blue sleeves that we have gotten on the Chase Elite 67 Jeff Hardy. And we've gotten this in a basic before, I do believe. But you guys can see it's supposed to be navy with the lightning green going down, which I think we've gotten in a Jax figure before from uh, from Jax before, which was a beautiful figure. That was a beautiful Jeff Hardy figure right there. But this one, you guys can see the face paint is a little off. It's missing some colors. Like the colors aren't in, uh, are kind of inaccurate. The lips are painted differently. There's like silver on the figure when they're supposed to be a different color. I think they're supposed to be black. The sleeves are not the right color. And these are supposedly from February 2019, I think. And they are inaccurate. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I'm not exactly sure, again, why they make these decisions when they do. <laughs> Good God in heaven. <gasps> Might have actually vomited. But, uh, yeah, Jeff Hardy is definitely not right right here. And um, I think that the lightning sleeve attire would have been much better. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that or why they make these decisions sometimes. But that is another figure that has some inaccuracies. Next up, guys, we're diving into a figure that was the most disappointing figure for me. Diving into uh, San Diego Comic-Con. I was really looking forward to this figure. The Elite 80 Kevin Owens figure. I was looking forward to this figure so daggum much, man. Because I wanted... The long, thick beard, you know, nice fade going on, nice faded haircut, nice looking attire and stuff like that. I was hoping we would get the Stun Owens Stun attire, and we did, which I am very happy about. I love this Kevin Owens to an extent. You know, I think from the neck down, it's almost perfect, but the head sculpt just is not doing it for me. I don't know what it is. Um, that's not exactly why it's on this uh, on this video. I'll definitely show off why it is also included in the video. It's not just the head sculpt. The hair color and the beard color are definitely inaccurate, but also the live tattoo on his forearm is way too big and I don't know why they changed it. I'm pretty sure on his other elites it is a perfect size. Like on many elites in the past, they've nailed the size of that. I guess adding the other tattoos may have thrown off the sizing. I'm not exactly sure how that works or why that is, but the live tattoo is definitely too large. I'm going to have to switch out that left arm, possibly. Uh, the left forearm will be switched on action figure surgery when we get there. But uh, also the basic figure that is coming out around this time is also better. The head sculpt on the basic figure that is coming out is a lot better than the elite, which I will definitely be head swapping because the eyes look so much better on the basic and I'm still gonna have to paint the beard and hair from the Kevin Owens basic but this head sculpt looks much better than the elite and I got to switch out the forearm tattoo but I had to include KO because that was a very disappointing figure for me because it looks so you know so hyped on it man he's he's probably my favorite current talent right now and uh, that really upset me but next up guys we have trash Corbin now for this guy you know you can say what you will you may not want to switch it out yourself but 
Uh, I'm probably not going to switch it. I'm going to keep my Trash Corbin, you know, uh, trash can over here with the with the King Crown on it. That's what I'm going to use forever. Uh, I definitely will review this figure for you guys, and you guys can see here they are going with a Dean Ambrose torso, which is very odd to me. I can't, I, I do not know why they use the Dean Ambrose torso. I'm not exactly sure what torso would have made more sense. I just do not see a Dean Ambrose torso here. Corbin definitely has more body fat than this. He's not, you know, um, as muscular. He's not as big, or uh, he's definitely taller than Dean Ambrose was. But I, I don't know if I like this torso for Corbin. I'm sure the figure will look better in person, but I, I'm just not buying this torso mold for Trash Corbin. You know, I could just be giving him a hard time because I'm I, I'm not a Trash Corbin fan, but I wanted to include in the video. Maybe you guys feel the same way. Let me know what you guys think of Trash Corbin down in the comment section. I am definitely keeping my Trash Can Trash Corbin Elite, but next up, guys, is going to be Angel Garza. Now, this could be something that gets changed. It could just be the render image, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it, but if you guys look at the legs, you guys will see here that the legs have the uh, uh, the James Ellsworth problem or the Ty Dillinger problem where his legs are sculpted as if they're tights so they have these weird ripples in it it looks like he has like iron bars underneath his skin or something and it's like rippling up the X-Pac figure the fan central you know takeover line the the fan central vote series NWO X-Pac also has this problem so I don't know if this is going to be the final product I don't know if they're going to change that going forward but usually what the renders look like is typically what we get so I'm not sure um, it's gonna have the tights problem like we saw with Christian, you know, it's gonna have like tights molded on I think the Revival Basics even had something wrong with this when they released way back in the day So both of those figures have that problem again They may not actually have that when they are released But here in the render images they do have it and I wanted to make it apparent to you guys Just in case you guys missed out on it next up guys speaking of the fan takeover central line or whatever the hell you want to call that The fan takeover series we're bringing up the Randy Orton figure now This one's very interesting because the figure that's shown off in the render image right here this is attire was not included in the poll for the audience, okay? So the three attires that were included was Backlash 04, WrestleMania 20, and then SummerSlam 2004. And then the figure that won the poll was supposedly WrestleMania 20, right? In the royal bluish, you know, darkish bluish gold and black attire with the Intercontinental Championship. But then this figure right here looks more of like a, a mix between like a royal blue and silver. And then Royal Rumble 2004, which is not even this color. It was more of like a teal with silver and black. And I'll put up all the comparison images so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But I thought that was very interesting how the WrestleMania 20 figure won, but this is Royal Rumble 2004, or it's close to Royal Rumble 2004. It looks just like it. So maybe uh, that was a mistake. Maybe this won't be the final product. Maybe they're going to just give us Royal Rumble 04. I don't know. That's just very weird that a figure that wasn't even on the list won the poll. Maybe it was just a coloring pr uh, you know, problem or something like that. I'm not sure, but uh, Orton's attire is definitely not accurate to the fan poll that won or any attire that was actually featured in the poll So I thought that was definitely worth noting and putting up to you guys to show off But not only do we have Randy Orton's attire guys, but another figure we have is Survivor Series Kane Now this one's not a huge deal. It could be very easily fixed, but you guys know Survivor Series Kane It's a new uh, Kane figure that we are getting. Uh, it's not necessarily new It's kind of just a repaint of a Kane that we've gotten in the past, but it is in the Survivor Series 2001 gear very beautiful gear, very beautiful figure, except for the belt. It is missing the studs on the belt, which are just silver dots, you know, nothing too crazy. I would love to see if they could sculpt the, you know, sculpt the studs on there or give us a new mold or something. I honestly feel like Kane is too, you know, like skinny in these figures. I feel like he needs to be way bigger because he was a giant back in the day, especially. So that was something that I would like to see, but I'm not even complaining about that or talking about that being a problem. I'm more talking about the belt because it is missing the studs painted on there, which again is very simple to do. You could do it just as simple as just dot 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 with a paintbrush with a with a paint marker yeah I mean you could fix it really easily but it is something that I wanted to point out in the video and talk to you guys about there so there's Survivor Series Kane next up is going to be Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt now this one right here it isn't necessarily like uh I mean it's problems but it's not necessarily a huge problem you guys know that at San Diego Comic-Con it was shown off with a belly button you know on the torso we know that it's been fixed They've even shown off new images of the Rings that exclusive Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt where it is fixed, so I'm not even worried about that anymore. That would have been included in this video. It will now not be included in the problems with it. But you guys will see here that the pants are going to be black. Like, that is a final thing. Now, when I first saw the render image, I thought, you know, oh, they're going to switch this because he didn't. He doesn't wear black pants. He wears khaki pants. He wears, you know, a sweater and everything. But apparently, this figure is supposed
supposed to be from Money in the Bank, where Braun Strowman took on the Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt. I think it was, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was Money in the Bank. I could be wrong about the event, but at that event, he was wearing this attire with black pants, with a tight sweater, no shirt collar underneath. And so that is just very disappointing that they would pick that attire, man. Like, why, like, he never really wore this. Like, when you think of Firefly Funhouse Bray, you think of the basic that we're getting with the collar underneath the sweater, the long red sweater, nice sculpted sweater, nice khaki pants, nice black shoes. I mean, that is what you think of when you think of Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt. So that is really what I think a lot of collectors wanted for the Elite. So this is a very disappointing release, given that we're not going to have the collar, we're not going to have the khaki pants, we're going to be missing a lot of qualities that I think the Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt needs, man. I just think that was a very big miss there, and that is probably one of the bigger problems in this video that I have, because it's just not accurate to what you ideally see when you think of Firefly Funhouse Bray. You don't imagine black pants, and you imagine a nice, nice long sweater, not like a tight knit sweater, and you don't think of it not, ha you think of it having a collar and a belt and, and khaki pants, man. So that, that really was upset. That's probably one of the bigger problems I have with this figure and one of the figures that I'm most disappointed in coming up because I really wanted this thing to be perfect because I like Firefly Funhouse Bray better than The Fiend and The Fiend figure was pretty good except for a few proportion issues, but this was a big miss, man. This one really upset me and I don't know how I'm going to fix it, but I really want, I know the basic is coming out, but I really like an elite in that attire. So maybe we'll get another one who knows but for now this is what we're getting here but we do have a couple more here to mention before we get out of here guys next up is going to be the Bret Hart 2-pack the WCW you know uh, United States Championship 2-pack with Goldberg and Bret Hart I do not know why Bret Hart's singlet is so orangish color it has like an orangish salmon color instead of like a bright you know, iron pink, and I don't know why I said iron pink, but a pink, you know, hot pink Bret Hart, you know, synonymous with Bret Hart. I don't know why it has this, like, salmon orangish color, but it does, and uh, I don't think this is changing, man. I mean, we got the mock images, we got all the different images here, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the final product, so I don't know why it has a salmon color, but it's not accurate to the matchup that this is supposed to be about, and uh, I don't know. I just thought that was a very weird touch that they made it this color, but I definitely had to put that one in the video, and finishing us off, guys, we have Kofi Kingston's Decade of Dominance or Domination Elite here that is going to be, I don't think it's Walmart exclusive or it, it is, I think it is Walmart exclusive. Kofi Kingston's knee pads are missing and they're just painted on. Now we've talked about this before. Um, I don't think they can change, it's like once they settle on a specific body mold for a character they can only change a couple things about it. Usually it's like the shoes or the head sculpt that they can change and for Kofi Kingston here they chose to change the head sculpt and uh, we have a brand new head sculpt here but the uh, they can't add knee pads and I don't know why they can't add knee pads. You would think like when you're creating a new character or a new figure in your thing, it would be like, okay, we're creating Kofi Kingston. We want a new head sculpt. Okay, we're doing the head sculpt. Okay, we're using the regular Kofi torso, right? Okay, same arms, crotch mold. Okay, we're going to use the same Kofi legs. You know, you think it would go by part by part and you would plug in the parts that you already have readily available and you would custom build it with your factory. But I guess that's not the case because you can't add knee pads, which I don't understand. And you, can, and you just paint them on there. Which I, j I just don't get how, like, battle packs can come with knee pads sometimes, but then the elite figures can't come with knee pads, and sometimes they come with way bigger knee pads than they're supposed to. Sometimes they come with smaller knee pads than they're supposed to. I don't know how it works, but it's just crazy to me how that happens all the time and how we get just these crazy things going on. But one more figure that I want to knock out here at the end, guys, is going to be the Fan Takeover Central Johnny Gargano in the Wolverine gear. Another short kick pad problem. I do not know why this happens. Again, this goes back to the Kofi Kingston. It's like once they stick with an original mold, man, they really cannot change it, or, or it seems like it. It seems like it's just locked up, like they must go with this mold. This is his third Elite now that has had the short kick pad problem, and I know the community has made it known that they do not like this. They don't like the short kick pads. They're not accurate. Uh, nobody wears these short style kick pads. Uh, his lower legs are painted the color of the kick pads. It's just super weird, and I don't know why they can't change that, but I know that the community had a fit over this as well, and I don't know exactly what we're going to do to switch this out. You know, with the with the last Johnny Gargano, you could switch out the kick pads and the lower legs with a network spotlight Finn Balor, and it would pretty much blend in perfectly, but for this figure, I don't know how you're going to switch out the kick pads. You may have to do some crazy stuff. Guess we'll just have to cross that bridge when we come to it, and we may have to paint it up or customize it. I'm not exactly sure, but... 
that is very bummerific here that uh, that is not going to be fixed. But another thing, guys, is that the Wolverine claw marks, you know, this is the Wolverine gear, and they left out the Wolverine slashes across the chest of the Johnny Gargano entrance vest. So that is another big problem here. Again, leaving off the X-Man, I guess X-Man, man. They, they can't do Wolverine. They can't do the X-Man from the Top Talents Rollins. They just, uh, they don't want to F with, with the X-Man or Wolverine or any of that stuff, man. So our Johnny Gargano figure will not only have the short kick pad problem, guys, but we will also not be getting the slashes. And I know a lot of people voted for this attire specifically specifically the Wolverine attire to get the slash marks in the entrance vest, so that is pretty upsetting there. Uh, I voted for the Iron Man, so, <laughs> uh, but we didn't get that figure either, so I guess they're laughing in my face now. That is pretty much all of the figures that have problems that are coming later this year and into 2021. I figured you guys would like to get on here and express any problems that you might have with any figures moving forward. Again, I didn't include Elite Series 78. You probably could have included Drake Maverick's massive hands. You could have included Matt Riddle's arms and shoulder size. You could have included his thighs, possibly, or some other things that we've had problems with this year on some other figures but I wanted to focus on the figures that we don't have in hand yet and that is going to be these figures that I covered here today. If you guys have any more you'd like to see or you have any that I left out, I would love to know them down in the comment section below. But that pretty much does it for this video guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. You know, we get amazing figures man. It's not, you know but nobody bats 100. Nobody bats 100 and you know, as many great figures as we get. Sometimes we do get some head scratching things and I want to talk about them here on the channel because I want to be transparent about those things and talk about them and let you guys know what's inaccurate and what I don't like and what I do like and what I love and what I don't love. So that is what I try to do here, guys. I want to be as honest and transparent with you, and you probably get that from my reviews, and I hope you guys do get that when I review a figure. I give you my honest thoughts and opinions on every figure I ever review, so I did want to get on here and talk about these as well. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.